Hello everybody, here's another tutorial on my W169 Mercedes-Benz A-Class. It's parking brake, which in case of this car is a handbrake, builds up a lot less braking power on the right wheel than it does on the left one. So let's figure out what's wrong and possibly fix it. Now the caliper needs to come off. That's a 13 hex and counteracting requires a 15 mm hex wrench. Here it goes. Because of the brake line here in the way, I can fit a socket and I should be able to rotate this whole assembly upwards and simply slide it out. Yeah, let's now remove the brake pads. Now up to the caliper carrier. There's two bolts here at the rear. Bolt size here is 16 hex. But this requires a longer ratchet and a little extension. Yeah, now up to the lower one. Luckily my longer ratchet fits into the wheel well. Finally I take out this little retaining bolt. That's a Torx 30. And I'm gonna be really careful because those tend to strip out easily. To be able to remove the disc I still need to release the parking brake. Here we go. But what about the brake shoes? Seems there's hardly any lining on those. On the other hand, the drum, which means the inner side of the disc, looks still fine. That's how it looks like when the parking brake is applied. Other than the replacement part, the original piece obviously doesn't come with a lining at all, because overall the thickness of the two parts is identical. However, once at this point I'm gonna swap those out, and the first step will be removing those two retaining springs. There's a slot at the rear facing in this direction. Yeah, it comes right out. And that's how this piece looks like. Let's achieve this on the lower one as well. Here it goes. There's now still spring tension on this assembly. That's by the way how I will later adjust the brake. That spring tension is enormous. Yeah, now let's release the springs through the hole inside the brake shoe. And here it goes. Obviously all the four pieces are exactly the same. The long two-sided spring belongs here to the bottom and the other one is installed on top. And now let's try to get this entire piece reinstalled. And I managed to connect the lower ends together. On the upper side I will install the spring first as well. Yeah, here it goes. But finally the adjuster needs to fit in between. Let's try it that way. Why aren't these two parts aligned properly? Now they are. Yeah. Brake shoe number one is locked in place. Up to the second. Let's again line the holes up. Here we go. There's a metal piece extending from the wheel hub, which separates the two brake shoes. If one's left and one's right, everything's perfectly fine. Make sure the spring ends up on top. Time to try out how this adjuster piece works the way I was installing it. Downwards means extending the brake shoes. Upwards means releasing those. Just this on the other side. I apply copper paste onto the contact points. Putting this assembly now back on requires a little twisting. Perfect. Yeah. Here we go. Time to reinstall the brake disc. I've been applying only a tiny bit of copper paste. I put the old retaining bolt back in and save the new ones for a new set of brake discs, which may be required soon. Torx pack is 10 newton meters. Now the most important part, adjusting the parking brake. Okay, here's the wheel. Downwards means spreading the shoes. This now needs to be done until the brake disc isn't moving anymore. With the parking brake fully released, of course. And now the instructions tell to move eight steps backwards. One, two, that's very tight. Three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight. It's not been around five hours of really nice to work. If you nevertheless enjoyed the video, you may want to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel or watch even more of my content. See you back next time. Goodbye.